Time for member statements. I recognize the member from Stormont, Dundas South, Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. On Friday, I had the opportunity to attend the South Stormont Volunteer Gala. Congratulations to the winners, Sharon Potvin and Mark Labrassier. I was able to listen to Gillian Lynch address the crowd. Gillian is here today and is a young professional who is unstoppable in her drive to help others. Gillian is an example of selflessness and strength. She grew up with her family not far from where I live in St. Andrews West, along with her brother Miles, who had a lifelong battle with cystic fibrosis. Miles Lynch was the first Canadian to successfully undergo three double lung transplants at SickKids here in Toronto. Miles tragically passed away on December 31, 2021, after bravely living life to the fullest. In the months before his passing, Miles had told Gillian to chase after every dream without hesitation. Gillian has been committed to sharing Miles' story and giving back to the institutions that helped Miles and her family. Gillian is chasing dreams and changing the world. This young lady has quite the impressive resume. Hopefully, Speaker, I'll have enough time to share some of her accomplishments. Gillian has become a sought-after public speaker for the nonprofits that have supported her family. Gillian has delivered speeches for the Sick Kids Foundation, Cystic Fibrosis Canada, Federated Health Charities of Canada and the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Gillian has delivered 178 presentations for the Heart and Stroke Foundations within four months to companies across Toronto, raising $1.6 million. Gillian is also dedicated to cycling across Canada to help raise funds for sick kids in Toronto. She was recognized as a top 30 changemaker under 30. I know your community is proud of your work, Gillian. I have no doubt your parents are proud of your drive and determination. Miles would be quite proud of the accomplishments and advocacy, Gillian. Keep up the amazing work. Member statements. I recognize the member for James Bay, Mishkegoic. Merci, Madam. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Is it member statements? Yes. Okay. Hey, it's a real shame in 2023 that they would still lose loved ones because of work, uh, weak enforcement of workplace safety and ensuring regulation. But it is, it is what happens every year. Nearly a thousand workers die from work-related injuries and illness while others injured and suffer from occupational diseases. This is why we gather on April 28th, a day set aside to honour the memories of fallen workers to rise, raise awareness for those who still suffer from consequences of work-related injuries and illness and commit ourselves and commit ourselves to do more. Across Canada, people will gather to express these common beliefs that all workers deserve a safe work environment and, they, and that we must learn from the past strategy. This is why we state clearly that we need more than promises from employers and government. We gather to celebrate the West Tree Bill C-45, but also to demand that it be, re, uh, be enforced. We, we have to do this because every year too many workers are victims from work-related injury, occupational diseases, and lose their lives on the job. Those, uh, members confirm, those numbers confirm that the law is not being uh, sufficiently enforced. It is clear that proactivity uh, and, and central prevention of the workplace uh, injury being vigilant and potential threat to, and holding companies accountable for their neglect are just two ways in which we can ensure workers are able to go home once the, the, their work day is over. Thank you. I'll remind members, you have 90 seconds. I will be cutting you off after 90 seconds for your member's statements. I recognize the member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to recognize the outstanding work of Donald Halsey and Johnny Valencia from the Salvation Army chapter in Scarborough Centre. The organization has been serving the community for over 50 years. Their leadership has been instrumental in providing critical services such as operating a homeless shelter, providing housing and support services, running a food bank for, to help assist uh, the needy, counseling, job training, financial literacy, and the list goes on. They have a network of churches throughout Scarborough community. Their school meal program provides meals to, for children who may not have this regular access at home. Last year, over 115,000 students received nutritional meal that helped them um, learn and thrive. I want to acknowledge the staff and scores of volunteers for their hard work and dedication in making a positive impact in their community of Scarborough Centre. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. Member statements. I recognize the member for Waterloo. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Grief is an expression of love. If we don't love, we don't grieve. My grandmother, Patricia Cunningham, passed away last spring in Windsor, Ontario. She was 95. She was a mother, grandmother, and wife to first husband Ken Wood and second husband Colonel Roger Cunningham. And my grandmother was an artist. She loved to find good trouble throughout her life, right up to the retirement home stage. She loved animals, music, and for some unknown reason, deviled eggs. One of my favourite memories with her is visiting Ontario Place. A lifelong resident of Windsor, she loved all genres of music, was a talented artist whose paintings grace homes worldwide, including my own Queen's Park office. She will be missed by her children, Alan, Lori, Lane, and Brent, and stepdaughters, Sheila, Alexis, and Martha their spouses, and some pretty awesome grandchildren, plus family and friends. <laughs> uh, for me, she reminded me of Mary Tyler Moore. She was strong, creative, intelligent, independent. Former MPP P Percy Hatfield and CBC reporter told me that he used to hang out in Pat's office waiting for the scoop when she was a hospital administrator, and she was thrilled when he delivered a 90th birthday scroll. I would be remiss if I didn't ask the government to honour their promise of Alzheimer's funding. It's never the wrong time to do the right thing, and Alzheimer's patients require leadership, and it is a cruel disease. I feel fortunate to have called her my nanny Pat. She was a good person who loved us and was loved. <laughs> member statements. I recognize the member for Mississauga Malton. Madam Speaker, May 1st, 2023 marks National Physicians' Day in Canada and Doctors' Day in Ontario. In the trying times of 2020, when COVID-19 has struck the world at large, we see how dedicatedly and selflessly the doctors all around the world have served the people at large and emerged as true heroes. They haven't thought about their health, family, personal issues, but worked around the clock to help and heal. I'm pleased to rise today to express my gratitude and appreciation to all Ontario physicians for the critical and life-saving services they perform daily. Our government continues to support our physicians by accelerating efforts to build up the province's healthcare workforce. We're investing over $100 million to expand and accelerate rollout of undergraduate and postgraduate medical education. Our physicians work around the clock, sacrificing precious time away from their loved ones, facing burnout, putting themselves at risk, and protect the health and well-being of Ontarians. Thank you for your service. On behalf of my family, my constituents, and my caucus colleagues, I want to express my most sincere appreciation to Ontario Medical Association and thanks to our province's 31,500 practicing physicians and 1,900 medical students. Thank you for the care you provide in a normal and extraordinary time. You are a true representative of Ontario spirit. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Other member statements, I recognize the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. Housing is a human right, but in Ontario, things have gone terribly wrong. There isn't enough actually affordable housing across communities. This government isn't building it, and it isn't supporting low-income tenants. Lately, we've been hearing about slumlords who aren't maintaining units. They're allowing mold to fester. They're not fixing appliances or turning the heat on. We know of abuse of the landlord's own use, eviction, where landlords have been caught lying trying to evict tenants. There's rampant discrimination in applying for housing. Many landlords aren't accepting folks on ODSP or new Canadians or racialized people. Recently, I met with folks on Ontario Works who need better protections from slumlords. They told me that instead of first and last month's rent being required now, they're being asked for four months or more to even compete for a spot. People sharing a room have zero protection, Speaker, because they aren't technically tenants. So when they answer an ad and are forced to pay $800 for a room and then move in and find another person, a stranger, paying the same amount for the other half of the room, there's nothing they can do and there's nowhere for them to go. The Human Trafficking Coalition in Durham recently flagged a new danger is accommodation ads targeting vulnerable, unhoused women. Ads for a bedroom rental in a house or apartment look safe and renovated. However, many of these addresses aren't even residential, but a young girl looking for a safe place to live doesn't know that, and predators are counting on it. Ugly things are happening in Ontario. Home is supposed to be a safe place, and in Ontario, this government is turning its back on low-income and underserved Ontarians. Just because this government pretends it isn't happening doesn't mean it isn't. Do better. These are people's lives. Thank you. Member statements. 
I recognize the member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On April 24, the Armenian community of Ontario and Canada commemorated the 108th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, which took place in the Ottoman Empire from 1915 to 1923. Uh, some one and a half million Armenians perished in one of the first genocide of the 20th century. I am the grandson of survivors of the Armenian and the Greek genocides. Armenians will never forget that during their darkest hours, Canadians stood by the survivors. The Armenian Relief Association of Canada, under the patronage of the Governor General Bing, Archbishop Neil McNeil, Venerable Archdeacon Cody, Colonel Sir Henry Pellet and other prominent Canadians raised $300,000 to feed, clothe, and house the refugees. Toronto's The Globe spearheaded the campaign to raise funds for the starving Armenians. Furthermore, the association brought 109 orphan boys to Canada and resettled them in a farm near Georgetown. At the same time, nurse Sarah Corning of Nova Scotia saved 5,000 Armenian and Greek orphans from slaughter in the city of Smyrna. In keeping with the tradition of our forebearers, the Canadians and the Canadians' first international humanitarian mission. Member statements. Member statements. Member statements. I recognize the member for Ottawa. Thank you very much, Speaker. Earlier this week in question period, I raised the issue of wait times for breast cancer surgery at the Ottawa Hospital. I told the story of Lisa, whose wait was so long she was forced to travel to a private clinic in Montreal and pay $50,000 for life-saving surgery. Lisa is not the only woman who has suffered as a result of unconscionable wait times at the Ottawa Hospital. Christine McMillan of Ottawa was stunned when her surgeon suggested that she go private. She said the wait was torture. Gail Kelpin said the two surgeons suggested she consider a private clinic for surgery. And because she travels for work, one surgeon suggested that may, she may go to an, have to go to another country. How is it that at the Ottawa Hospital, one of the largest hospitals in Ontario, that only 13% of women are getting their breast cancer surgeries within the safe recommended time? At the Civic Campus, not much better, 29%. And for gynecological cancers at the same hospital, it's 30%. There's a reason that Ontario started measuring wait times in 2007. It was to prevent this from happening. The Ottawa, the hospital, the ministry, the minister, the premier have failed these women and their families. There needs to be action now so that these women can get the care they need and deserve. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. I recognize the member for Ajax. <laughs> Speaker, today I rise honored to represent the people of Ajax. Over the last week, I had the privilege of touring two exceptional community care organizations in my riding, which I would like to share with you. The first one is SHE Health, an organization providing exceptional health care services for over a century with more than 8,000 employees nationwide, including nearly 1,000 health care workers in Ajax and its surrounding areas. SE Health delivers over 20,000 home care visits per week to Ajax and its surrounding communities. During my tour, I had the pleasure of meeting with Kyle, the manager, and I would like to extend my gratitude to him and the entire ST team for their dedication to our community. I'd also like to thank the patients that shared their stories of satisfaction and the difference their cares have made outside of the hospitals. The second organization I had the pleasure of visiting was Carrier Healthcare Center, where I joined my colleague, PA, the, minister, the PA, Don Gallagher Murphy. This registered charity offers free community services and programs such as health promotion and wellness programs, counseling, primary care, and education. I was particularly impressed by their recent event, Taking Back Our Health, which focused on advancing health equity in Durham. I'd like to take a moment to extend my sincere gratitude to SE Health and Carrier Health for the exceptional work they do in our community. Your commitment to high-quality health care services and programs is truly commendable. The dedication of your staff. Member statements. I recognize the member for Brampton North. Oh. 
Thank you, uh, thank you, Speaker. Now, uh, being a Heart Lake boy, Professor's Lake was a neighborhood uh, in my riding that I honestly wasn't that familiar with until I saw a public office. Since deciding to run, I set out to get to know the neighborhood as best I can, and I was thrilled when the Residents Association invited myself and local councillor Rod Power to host an Earth Day barbecue and litter pickup. The, uh, the weather didn't cooperate, uh, Madam Speaker, but I've never been part of a group that was so happy uh, literally lining up to get pickers uh, in the rain. Uh, to go out and uh, pick up garbage and clean uh, the neighborhood. Um, we had about 70 people out at once picking up litter uh, and had around 150 attendees for the barbecue uh, total. I'd like to thank uh, Ward 7 and 8, Brampton City Councilor Rod Power, the Professors Lake Residents Association, Peel Paramedics, Peel Police, Brampton Fire, the Brampton Honey Badgers, En Route to Success, Bramley Boxing Club, Starbucks, uh, Maple Leaf Foods, Enbridge, Boys and Girls Club uh, of, of Brampton, Young Bosses and Coca-Cola for all coming out to support the event. Um, Professors Lake is a, a heck of a neighbourhood, Madam Speaker, uh, and it's even prettier today because of the community getting together to clean up the neighbourhood. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out on Sunday. Uh, it was a great time. Thank you. It is now time for introduction of visitors.